Primetime Medical Mysteries takes an in-depth look at some medical conditions that are stumping the medical community. Here's a clip from Chris Cuomo's report on one of the greatest medical mysteries, stuttering. <laughs> if you look at this vibrant 17-year-old, you see an outgoing, popular, accomplished athlete, an A student who's on her way to college. But listen to her introduce herself. Um, Rebecca Glass. Rebecca Glass has stuttered since second grade. Diane's her mom. You thought it was Tourette's? It was pretty wild. She was moving her head and twitching her eyes. She was speaking, trying to get the sound out. You know, good days, bad days. Her parents would soon learn that Rebecca is an example of one of the greatest known medical mysteries, stuttering. Speech disrupted by long pauses and frequent repetitions, often accompanied by facial tics and tremors, and there is no known cure. When people would hear you stutter, yeah. they would see that as a reflection of how you think, not some just would. how you think. Yes, yeah, some would. Some thought that it meant that I wasn't intelligent or some, some thought that. You can see Chris Cuomo's full report tonight on Primetime, Medical Mysteries at 10 p.m. Eastern. You can also kind of act as the doctor by logging on to abcnews.com during the show to give us your diagnosis for other medical mysteries. Here with us to take a closer look at stuttering is Phil Schneider from the Stuttering Foundation of America. Welcome, Phil. Good morning. Well, first of all, I don't think people even know what really stuttering is. They think it's a, a, a mental disorder, and it's not, correct? What is it? Absolutely. Stuttering is a physical condition. It's a trait. It's a tendency to sudden physical interruptions in your ability to say what you want to say. They come on suddenly, and some people very frequently, could be every other word, requiring a lot of time and physical effort to move on. And in other people, they may have these interruptions infrequently, once a day, a few times a week, and they may occupy just a little bit of time and take relatively little effort. Um, now, at the, in, in Chris Cuomo's piece, they were talking about uh, the, the, the mother thought that her child had Tourette's, which is completely different than this. How are they different? Well, Tourette's involves uh, motor tics in the body, which can be episodic uh, and deal with all kinds of parts of the body. What's interesting about stuttering is it involves only communicative speech. That is, if you're just talking to yourself, talking in a closet or to an animal or maybe singing, uh, you don't have these motor interruptions. If you really want to communicate to someone else and it's important to you, the rate of interruptions are increased. Sometimes Tourette's and stuttering, you can have both, or you can have just the stuttering and no Tourette's. Right. Now, I understand that this may be genetically linked, that they're looking actually for a gene that can be responsible for this. Can you tell me what research is showing? Yes, there's a, a great deal of research at NIH that has clearly shown that adults who retain the tendency toward these sudden interruptions in speech have a strong familial predisposition, which means the, the odds are very strong. There are other members of their family in other generations, maybe even people they haven't met. And that accounts for about 70% of adults who have this trait. Right. So uh, how, if you are speaking to a person that is stuttering, many times you have almost feels like the guilt that you're causing this to happen, um, which has nothing to do with that. It's not due to stress, and it's not due to being at a stressful situation that the person starts stuttering, is it? Stress can exacerbate stuttering in a person who has the trait, but it doesn't cause stuttering. And as you mentioned for the listener, stuttering, listening to stuttering can be very stressful as well. You can feel the tension of the speaker. You can begin to empathize and think that they're really having a hard time. You can begin to think that you're causing it. And the best thing for the listener to do is to realize this person's just going to take an extra few moments to share their message. Um, and if the person who stutters can somehow at some point share with the listener what their needs are, hey, this is what's going on, I need an extra moment. Uh, the listener is often put at ease. And tell me what's going on with new therapies. Uh, they're going to cover something in the show. Well, what's the newest therapy that seems to be working to, to help people stop stuttering? Well, I think one of the most important things to realize now, which is different than the past, is that caring for young children who stutter, most people who stutter begin between the ages of two and five when their language is exploding, and that caring for those children with appropriately trained professionals working in partnership with parents is extremely effective 
and harmless and in many cases can prevent the possibility of a lot of suffering and struggling over the years. And tell me the, the newest therapy which is uh, I believe almost saying what the person is saying at the same time it tends to help this? Well there are different things that people do that reduce the frequency of stuttering or increase it. Uh, they aren't necessarily therapeutic because they may just be ways to avoid real communication. So if you're talking, as you point out, in unison with another person, you're not really spontaneously sharing your thoughts and feelings as I am now. Um, and that takes uh, a lot of time and practice. Very often stuttering is increased by more excitement and more passion about what you want to say. Being able to learn to keep the energy of your voice down and keep the pace down uh, are extremely helpful. Great. Well, those are excellent uh, points, and I'm really glad you came and cleared up because I'm sure many viewers think that uh, this is a mental condition, and it is not. I know many people with incredibly high intelligence that have this, uh, uh, doctors that I work with and everything. So uh, I appreciate you coming, Phil. Thank you for the opportunity.